Isaiah. Like most teenagers in Nashville, I go to public high school five days a week. But once a week, I get to take a little detour and learn in a different kind of classroom. I have been a student in the School for Science and Math at Vanderbilt since freshman year. Now, I am a senior. I have a lot of awesome memories here. The School for Science and Math at Vanderbilt gives high school students four years of scientific research experience beginning in their freshman year. between 2 and 20. It doesn't go anymore. Miss Cummings? <laughs> yeah. Wait, where, where does it say where are we? The other one didn't stink. Before we started. We have to eat 10 microliters. Freshmen in this program get a jump start on the scientific research process, learning basic research skills and tools. We have yours. Sorry. <laughs> Look, we don't have enough in there. We just scraped up a whole bunch of E. coli bacteria, and now we're putting it in um, stuff so it'll... Stuff. You're, you're not in So we can add DNA to it. Don't it's touch my hand like with the E. coli! We need the plasmid DNA. We just put plasmid DNA into our mixture, and now we have to set it on ice for 10 minutes. The plasma DNA will go into the bacteria, and so that way, when we come back next week, it will have absorbed and grown, and the bacteria will grow, or will glow. Hopefully, if we do it right. Yeah, these are our plates. Okay. See, you can tell that this one is glowing green. It's the protein that makes it glow. Mm -hmm. So the protein's in the bacteria. It's pretty. A fossil fragment would be a lot duller. It would be... Group three, Dr. Creamer. Abby, Renine, Sam, Ann, Nika, and Zoe. Let's get everything packed up and make our way over to Picnic Shelter 7, which is where we'll start the trail. In sophomore year, we sharpen our research skills and expand on what we've learned. About right there. Stop! The field trips were great. So guys, the distance is 8 meters, 56 centimeters. There we go. Looks like it might be a fossil in here. It looks like a shell. Oh, very good. That's a brachiopod. Yeah, we don't have any. This one we think is a mollusk. Yeah. Purpose. Hey guys, look at this. It's a big old brachiopod. There. I'm going to get somebody else to pour the hydrochloric acid <laughs> on the rock and it is going to fizz. Alright, it'll just burn. Oh. Oh. Awesome. Hey. So to be in this class, you have to be willing to get a little muddy. It'd be a little ignorant if you stood in the lab all day and didn't actually know what it was like to get out and do yeah. something in the environment. In junior year, we have completed original research projects based on our own interests. We studied the effects of surface area and distance on uh, short pulse hydrolysis. We studied the use of algae as bioindicators of water quality in natural creeks. We studied the effects of ethylene glycol on Procambarus and Procambarus is a species of crayfish. We decided to study the effects of oxytocin, a mammalian hormone, on Nasonia vitropinus and Giralti, two uh, wasps. And the reason that we did this is so that we could imitate lightning and see if we could somehow harness its energy. <laughs> By senior year, we are scientists. We are ready to partner with Vanderbilt researchers and help them with some groundbreaking scientific research that couldn't be done at the average high school. And I'm, I'll be using the light microscope. This is tissue from human patients who have pancreatic cancer. This is a picture of um, the normal human pancreas in color. And here we have the, the tumorous cells from a cancer patient. 
the main goal of like pancreatic cancer research a lot of the times is to find ways to make early detection possible. So I need to find one with a long antenna. So we're trying to figure out how that, how neuropeptides work in general. We're also trying to figure out is for an olfactory reception and how it relates to biological clocks. And so this is my lab. I'm inoculating bacteria. All of these have been isolated from the backs of frogs. I'm trying to see if as these bacteria grow, do they secrete anything that stops this deadly fungus that's um, attacking the skin of frogs. If these bacteria are helpful and they naturally occur on the frog skin, uh, bioaugmentation of any kind could slow down the global amphibian decline around the world. It feels really good knowing that the work I do in this program prepares me to go out in the world and realize my potential. It takes some serious time management to handle going to regular high school and the School for Science and Math, but it is so worth it, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs>